Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video what I want to do is talk about uh, database relationships using uh, Mongo. Okay, so yeah. So what does that mean? Like you've seen, I've done other videos where I've talked about like one-to-one -one relationships. So for example, like me, I'm one person and I have one nose and this nose only has one person. It's not like I share this nose with anybody else or, or uh, that uh, I or the nose shares me with anybody else. Um, so in that case, that's a one-to-one -one relationship. Generally, if you have a one-to-one -one relationship, you can keep the data sort of in the same collection or same table. Now, if you have a one-to-many relationship, so let's say, um, let's pretend that I have my phone, okay? And basically, I can own many phones, but my phone is only owned by one person. So in that case, there isn't, it's not one-to-one, -one, so you do want to keep them both in separate tables. So there'd be a people table, that includes me, and then a phone table. <clears throat> and then we would track, but since I can own many phones, you don't track how many phones I own in the people table. You keep track of who the phone belongs to in the phone collection or table <clears throat> using a foreign key, meaning like the ID of the person that phone belongs to would be somewhere inside the phone collection. And that's how you would do one-to-many. And then a many-to-many -many relationship, you would have a separate phone table. So if I have many phones and phones can be owned by many people, actually, let me think of a different example. Um, dogs, okay, because you can share ownership of a dog. Um, so there'd be a, a, a table of dogs and a table of people, okay? And then there'd be a third table that tracks uh, the different combinations of ownership. So you might have what we'll call like the dog owner's table or collection, and that would track, you know, saying, okay, Person five is an owner of dog six, but person seven is also an owner of dog six. And you have all these possible uh, mutations. This is also referred to as a join table. Um, and that's how you would do a many to many relationship. Now, that's, you know, usually when you think about that, you're thinking more in a traditional in an SQL database. Although, I mean, SQL is becoming more broadly diffuse. I just learned about this thing called Apache Drill. It's this project that actually will allow you to even use SQL on like MongoDB, any 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 sort of, because what it does, it actually learns how to, it, it's a application that allows you to run SQL queries on JSON datasets, which Mongo is very, very uh, congruent with JSON, which is really cool. So like my mind just exploded learning about that technology, but we're not gonna be using SQL today, but it's kind of cool to know that you could. Um, but, 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 let's, uh, see how we would do some of this stuff in Mongo. Cause that's, that's the kind of the goal of today's lesson. Like how, if I did want to use some of these like database type relationships, but I don't want to have to have like a separate SQL database to hold my related data and then have to have a Mongo database to hold my unstructured data. How can I just do it all in Mongo? Um, which is something you, you can do. Okay. So first let's do a one-to-one -one relationship. So again, we'll just do like nose um let's just find another good better example um let's say well we'll just use address as an example first and we'll just do different relationships with address so there's the person and then there's address so in the first we'll do one to one where every person has one address and every address is the address of one person okay so let's create a file and just to kind of show you my files here i have created uh, a connection.js. So here's just a sample application. So it's just my code to connect to my uh, Mongo database. So it's pretty boilerplate -y, nothing too fancy here. And again, all this will be pushed up to GitHub. Link is in the video description. Um, and then this is just a standard express server. I'm going to use that to just create some routes, to make it a little bit easier to work uh, with our Mongo query. This is not really an express lesson, but you know, if you know express, this will uh, seem very natural. Okay, so all well and good. So let's create a file to handle one to one. So we'll call this one to one version. Okay. Dot JS. Okay. So what I am going to do here is we're going to import the connected my my connection. So I'm gonna const require uh mongoose actually const mongoose until it's a saturday morning const mongoose equals require um mongoose 
not mongoose. Um, technically, want to import the connected one, so dot slash connection. Because essentially, what I'm doing in my connection file is I'm connecting to mongoose and then exporting that already established mongoose object instead of importing a fresh one. Okay, uh, cool. So let's see here. So essentially, we're going to have addresses and persons. So really, we're going to have people, and then people can have an address. And since they're one-to-one, -one, the most logical thing to do is just to have them all sort of in one collection, one uh, the equivalent of a table. So you can do that. And the cool thing about Mongo is you can easily actually nest schemas. So I can actually create two individual schemas. So I'll create the address schema. So const address schema. Okay equals a new mongoose.schema, okay, um, and then basically we'll pass in, uh, the address will have a street, which is a string, it'll have a state, which is a string, and it will have a zip, which is a string. Okay, so there's my address schema. And then we can have the address, uh, our, our person schema. So person schema equals a new mongoose. And I am assuming that you have some knowledge of Mongo going into this. So if you're completely new to Mongo, I recommend watching some of my other more introductory Mongo videos before this one. Okay. <clears throat> Mongoose.schema. And this will be a person. Again, a person has a name, which is a string. They'll have an age, which is a number, and they will have an address, which is an object of, that matches the address schema. Okay, so basically by doing this, what I've said is that I'm not specif specifying, like, is it a string? I'm saying this has to be an object. This property has to meet, match this schema. And since I'm using a schema to do so, that address will actually get its own unique ID within there. Um, not that I'll use it all that much, but theoretically, if I were, let's say they had multiple addresses, I could actually make this like an array of addresses and each address would have their own unique ID in there, <clears throat> which you could use. Um, I usually, like you could use, do this to create like a one to many address. So it's like this person has, has many addresses. Um, I generally avoid nesting. Um, while it can be very convenient, the issue is. If you're talking about data sets, I just kind of keep growing. So again, I can keep adding more and more addresses. If you're nesting arrays, you run the risk of hitting the maximum uh, document size. So one unit of data, one document, the equivalent of a record on a table, has a maximum size in Mongo, and you can hit that if you nest everything. So it's still better to kind of put everything in separate collections, in my opinion. Um, although, there are speed benefits of nesting. So again, depending on your the particular data, if it makes sense to nest it, you're not going to like hit like a two megabyte document. Um, you know, you, you maybe you're talking about like keeping track of two or three addresses, so the document won't get too big. Uh, then it makes a lot of sense to nest because you'll actually be able to query it faster. So there are trade-offs. Um, also, I just find keeping everything in separate collections easier to work with as a developer. Um, especially when I'm trying to do some more complex things, just having everything kind of separated makes life easier. Um, but again, depends what you're doing. And again, speed matters, especially when you're optimizing sort of a large data applications. Um, okay. So I have my address schema and then with my person schema, what I'd like to do is create a person model. So const person equals, uh, mongoose.model. Okay. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit. Oop, wrong direction. Boop, 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 boop. So that way you get a little bit better view of moi. There we go. Mongoose.model. Okay, and then we give the name of the model, which will be person. Okay, I'm going to call this person one, just because we're going to do several iterations of this. Um, and then again, we're going to use the person schema. And basically, I have what I need. Now, one thing you can do to make your life easier is you can add methods to the model. Okay, um, so I can be like person dot. So you can see a bunch of different 
cool things here. Okay, or I can just make up some functions. Like, here's what I'll do. I want to make it easier to, like, add a person. Well, actually, right now, just with this, it's pretty straightforward. So I won't bother with that. I'm just going to export the person. Module that exports equals person. And now we can, and again, I'll call this person one, just because, again, that way it doesn't get, it's easier to use the next version, and I don't have to keep, like, renaming everything. So I'm going to import person one, person one equals require dot slash one to one version. So I'm taking whatever that file exports, saving it in this person one variable. Um, and it just so happens that the thing that file exports happens to be the person one object. So I'm saving that same thing in this a variable by the same name in this file. Okay, makes sense. You know, you generally want to keep your variable naming uh sort of consistent so that was easier to kind of see where things are moving to from file to file and let's just create a route so we're going to create two routes one to create a new person and one to kind of like view people so first we'll say const no not we wouldn't do that uh app dot get call the slash new person uh you know i'm just actually no get people just giving these arbitrary. I'm not following any kind of conventions here. I'm just making routes that do things. Rec res. And again, I'm going to use async wait because it just makes the code a little bit cleaner. A lot cleaner. So we'll just query for all the people. Const person1. Or persons, we'll say. Persons. Or actually people, const people. That's the correct plural. Um, cons people would be person one dot find. Then I want to find everything, and I want to use a wait because again, that's going to return a promise. So I want to wait for that promise to finish, and then after that, I'm going to do res dot json, and then return the people. Easy peasy. Okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. This should be people. Obvious code, always trying to be unhelpfully helpful. Okay, now let's make a route to make a person. Okay, make person one async rec res. Const people, well, actually, const new person equals and we'll actually then we're gonna need middleware to parse our JSON bodies. So let me just quickly register some middleware. Doot 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 express.json. Again that's the parse our JSON our, our JSON bodies because I'm gonna be using Express and making an API request with the JSON data. Const new person uh, equals await person one dot create and I'll pass in the rec dot body. That'll create a new person. And then we'll res.json, the full list of people. So I'll just do res.json, await people1.find. There we go. And that'll just return all the people after adding a person. Okay, cool. That's it. Those two routes will allow me to make a person and see the list of people. So we can see what's kind of going on. So I'm gonna run this, so I'm gonna run that file, npm node index.js although am I in the right folder? I don't probably not in the wrong folder. Cannot find module.env because I didn't install it. What did I forget to install? I forgot to install .env in particular. npm install .env. Now we should be good. Node index.js. Oh, didn't get connected to Mongoose direction. Oh, authentication failed. Okie dokie. Doesn't like my username password. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new username password. We'll call it cheese. Ah. Cheese with the password of cheese. And this will only last one day. 
Okay, so basically by the time this video is up, let's actually make it six hours. By the time this video is up, this should have expired. Okay, yes, please let me use the weak password. Uh, okay, now it doesn't give you that option, so just do cheese cheese. Just make sure that I type that in there right. Cheese cheese, good. And add user, good. Then I'm going to delete this user since this user seems to not work. Okay. Head over to my .env and let's just change this to cheese. Cheese, cheese. Okay, quick troubleshooting. Okay, now let's just make sure that works now. Yeah, I'm still getting an off air. So, let's see here. Am I doing this to the right database? I should be. Unless this is the wrong database URL, that's also quite possible. So, let me see here. Databases. Connect. Connect. Your application, let me copy this. I'll be connected to some other database that I have. Yes, and I think that is the case. Okay, so let's replace this with cheese. Ah, cheese, cheese, the password. Let me change the database name. Video toots. Okay. And let's run that again. And there we go. We connected the Mongo. Okay, so important to keep track of sort of what the URL is there. So let me just update that where I keep track of these. Um over here on boost note. Or I'll just do this. Nah, I'll come play with that later. Okay, so let's open up Insomnia which is like Postman or Thunder Client, if you've used any of those. And let's go to our URL, which should be localhost4444. And again, first let's see if we get the data. So it should be like slash, take a look what our route was, get people. So let's make sure that get people works. Slash get people. So I should get an empty array because there should be no data in there. And that's what I got, good. So that works. And then we're going to do make person. That needs to be a post request. And we're going to be sending over a JSON body. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy over the schema here. Make life easier. Okay. And put that in here. Now just to make this even easier, let's do that. Cool. Okay, and then all of these need to get quotation marks because this is JSON after all. And then this address needs to match the address schema. So I might as well just grab the address schema from here and plop that right there. And again, all of these need to have need to be strings because all keys need to be strings in JSON. Uh, why is it not letting me type in there? There we go. Must have been hitting the wrong key. Cool. So now I just need to fill in these values. Parser, name, string. Okay, yes, it's not liking the stuff that I typed in here. So again, we'll just say name Alex, age 36, street, Gouda Lane. Florida, three, 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 three. Okay, so theoretically that matches the scheme of a person, right? It's gonna see my person schema says I need to have a name property, an age property, an address property, and the address property has to be an object that matches the address schema. So we see that right there. So all well and good. So I can hit send cannot post make person that I mess up the route oh it's make person one so make the make person one I hit send 
Oh, and I got an error. Let's see what it said. People one is not defined. Oh, because I'm because it's person one. Oops. So let's do person one. Change that there. And then let's restart the server. Because I didn't do any error handling, so the error shut down my server. You know, that's the reason why you error handle errors. Because if you don't handle errors, your application will literally just shut down at runtime. So this is, I, you know, if I wanted to be fully proper here, if I was making an actual, like, API that I was planning to, like, release for public consumption, I'd be wrapping a lot of this code in try catch blocks. Okay, but here we go. I hit send. And there we go. And see, like, there's the one I added prior. But notice what happens. See, because I use a nested schema, even the address has its own ID in the database. Even though they're all saved in the same collection, even the, the sub-schema, the sub-data, even though it's all in one batch of data, gets its own ID. Because I could have also done the schema like this. I, instead of creating a whole separate schema, I could have just done this. Instead, an address is an object here. This would end up in the same place, except the there wouldn't be a unique ID for each address. It just depends on what you want. Sometimes that unique ID can be useful if you need to like basically try to manipulate things inside the database and have some sort of unique thing other than an, an array index to identify things in there. Um, okay, but yeah. So basically, again, this was a one-to-one -one relationship. So we nested the data because it's just one-to-one. -one. There's no reason to have them in two separate collections. Because if there's a one-to-one -one relationship, that person should be in nobody's, should have no other address, and that address should have no other person. So it just makes sense to keep them in one data set. Okay, now what happens if a person could have more than one address? Okay, so let's create copy this file. So we can see that, you know, that we have all these side by side. You can see each one uh, paste. And this will be rename. We'll call this, get rid of the copy part. And then we'll call this one too many version. Okay, so we can start from the same place. Um, the only difference is that now address schema and person schema um, should get their own model. Okay, so this should, it's going to become person two. This will have its own model of person two. And then the address, instead of it being an item that, instead of it being an object that matches address schema, there's a cool thing you can do in Mongoose where you can specify the type of this data set to be another object in another collection. This type is referred to, um, it's called mongoose.types.objectID. Okay, so you're saying what you're saving here isn't the actual object, you're saving the ID of the object, and then you have to specify like where is that object, and that's gonna be in a separate model called address, I haven't named it yet, but I know I'm going to name it address, okay? Well, actually, I'll call it address two, okay? And this has to match whatever you call it. Like, see how here I'm calling it person two, the model? That's what this is referring to. So I'm, I'm going to create a, a address model. So const address two equals mongoose.model address two address schema. Again, this ref property is referring to the model name, which is this string here. So even though the variable name is the same, it's not the variable name that's important. It's this string here. That's how it knows, okay, I'm going to be getting it from the address collection. Because I've made two models, these will both be saved in two separate collections. So whenever I create a person, it gets saved in a person collection. And anytime I make an address, it's going to be saved in an address collection. Okay. Now, cool. So now let me export both of those. So I'm going to export person two and address two. I want both of those out there. Cool. So that is sort of how it would look like for a, a one to many relationship. So notice, like, I don't keep track of, and actually, this technically, I, I should do this in reverse. And this person's because a person can have many addresses. Uh, let me think about that. Mm. Yeah, a person can have many addresses. 
Uh, so I want to put this within an array. Oh, uh, this is one way I can do it. Mm -mm. I can do it this way. I'm not going to do it this way. Because I want to stick to sort of like how you kind of parallel like the way you can kind of implement it in any database. So in this case, what would happen is I would just have name and age for the person. And then their address would just be something we query separately. So in this case, I would have like the owner here and the owner here would be the, the reference. So in this case, this would be type mongoose mongoose dot types dot object id and again i need a comma over here and ref this refers to a person two because again i called this model person two okay so basically each address keeps track of the person that owns that address okay cool 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 And that works. That's good enough for me. So now I would go load that back into here. Okay, so again, this is the one-to-one -one routes. And then again, here we'll do get people. This will be the one-to-many routes. Okay, and first we'll do app.get, so that, that way we can see all the people. Slash get people. Async. Rec res. Okay, rec res. So what do we want to do? I, this, I really just want to return all the people, right? The problem is, I need to go get their addresses. Now, what I could do, again, you could use some fancy features uh, to, to pull that off in Mongoose, but I'm going to try to keep this sort of, again, in a standard way you can apply to any sort of database paradigm. So in this case, what we're going to do, because you can't really do joins um, like you can in SQL, what at first I would go get the person. So I would say... Um, uh, 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 uh. No, yeah, no, the easiest way to do this is going to be this way. So what I'm going to want to do, let's go back to our one to many. I am going to want to add that addresses property. Okay, so you kind of do things in reverse here in Mongo. It'll just, it's just the way that makes the most sense. So in this case, we would have addresses or We'll call it homes. Oops. And then again, this refers to address. Address one. That's going to be spelled correctly. Address two. And that's what these are called, right? Address two. So in this case, what happens is that really you have an array of potential addresses. Okay. And then basically we'll always add it to this array. So yeah, that's how that's going to work. So let's go back to our index. And so basically what's going to happen when we get people, to make, that makes this a lot simpler because now I can just do res.json. And then what I would do is I would just do the await people person to. Okay, let me actually import that stuff. So const person to address to, we'll use the structuring, equals, so that's what that curly bracket syntax is, it's called destructuring, if you need to look it up, I have lots of videos on destructuring, um, and then slash um, one to many version, and let me just make sure that that's exactly what I'm exporting, so back to the one to many version, I'm exporting person to and address to, good, just making sure that I'm keeping everything consistently named. So I would say person2.find, that would find me all the people. But again, homes is a reference field because homes 
as you can see back in one to many is a reference field homes so what i want to do is use a function called populate and what populate will do is i'm going to tell it to go look for this homes field it's going to say oh okay wait a second all the ids that are in this array are references to addresses in this address model and then it will like populate it so that way i actually get the data okay so in that case we just do dot populate and dot populate home so again here this homes is referring to the field name okay so that's referring to the field name of homes while this ref is referring to the model name of address two so just so you can see like what these things are referring to to see how they work okay so that is going to get me all the homes although right now there is no home so we need a way to add homes okay so i'm going to say app dot get um cool app dot get and then we're going to need two routes one to make a person we're actually probably going to need three routes make person so wait rec res and this one's just going to create a person okay so that's just going to res.json wait mm, what is it not liking wait rec res res.json okay well res.wait We'll say person two dot create rec dot body, but it is still something it does not like. So let me stretch this out in case I can see what's missing. App dot get, or well, it should be app dot post anyways, but that's not the issue. Make person, that's the URL. Oh, because I already have one named URL. So this should be make person two. So that way we keep them consistently named. And that's already called get people. So I should probably call this get people two. Expect uh, why is it like this rec res? And that's all formatted correctly. So I mean, am I missing a parentheses here? That all looks good too. So let's see here. If I hit save and let it format, res dot json. Why don't you like it? I know it's gonna be something silly. Uh, I think. Oh, await. Oh, I wrote the word await. I think there we go perfect okay so that's just to make a single person then I need the same thing to make an address I should probably not put these capitals in there just to not one less possible bug okay make address to okay and then we'll have like a link address link address to and basically what this will do is we'll take a id of a person and then we'll take a address id okay so we're going to get those two params and then basically what we're going to do here is basically do a quick update so first we're going to const get the person so const the person equals await person two dot find by ID rec rec dot params dot person ID and then we're gonna go get the address const person or const address equals await address two dot find by id because i'm finding the particular address i want to associate with it getting the object saving it in a variable rec.params dot address id and then i'm going to associate them with each other so i'm going to say person dot homes dot push and then i'm going to push the address inside of that so that way its array gets updated with that particular address and then i'm going to save that person so that way i save the updates okay and then that should do it and then I'm just going to push 
Uh, oh, but just I'm just gonna return the person, so people can get that person and see like the updated person. Okay, cool. So that would link them together, and that's essentially I think all I should need. Uh, so let's try that out. So let me restart the server. Okay, good. Now let me go bring this back. And first, let's make a post. So I'm going to cut the address out for a second. Make person to. Make the post. Get rid of the hanging comma. Okay, so good. We made a person. Okay, and I'm going to want that ID. So first, before I do that, I'm going to paste this address here. I'm going to copy this ID because we need it again in a second. That's going to be my person ID. So I'm going to put that... I'll put it over here in a comment for now. Okay. And then I'm going to add this address. Let me just take off this address property. Okay, so now it's going to be make address to. Okay, so there we have... Uh, that is not what I expected. Make, oh, because I see I did person to. My bad. This should be address to. There we go. So let me restart that server. Okay. And then hit send. And there we go. Okay, so see, I made an address. Now I want that address ID. I'm going to get the ID of that address. So let me put that over here. Okay, and then I need to go say link, what's the link address to? Okay, and then I put in the person ID first. And then I would put the second ID second, the address ID. I hit send. Oop, I got an error, so why? Let's see here, string value. Cast object ID. Oh, because I put the quotation marks in the in the thing here. That's why. My bad. So let's just hit node index.js. Let me just take out all these quotation marks out of the URL. My bad. Okay, hit send. And there you go. So you see, I associated the person with that. Okay. Now, let me just do a quick experiment. So right now, if I go back and I go to get person to, get people to, oh, that should be a get, get See, I, I get I get the list of people, right? Just like the accidental invisible person I made. But then here's Alex with the house I just associated with it. That seems like, okay, that was a lot of work to do that. But it gets better. Now, again, just so you can see what this populate function is doing, watch what happens if I take it off. So if I take off the populate function, I restart the server. I hit send. See, this is what's actually being saved in the database. It's just the IDs. It's this populate function that's telling it to say, hey, look at these IDs and replace them with the object that's in the other collection. Okay, so now if I restart that again, now with the populate function back, and see it populates there. So again, I have the data separated in two places. So that way, if I need that address multiple times, because different people can own the same house or whatnot, it, it, it can be there. Okay, depending on how you want to structure sort of, again, uh, your data. Okay, now if I wanted to do sort of a many to many, you could essentially just do kind of this both ways. So essentially what would happen, um, okay, let's do a many to many version. So copy, I want to copy the one to many, copy, paste. Okay, and that was going to be called rename the many to many version. And essentially I would just do this both ways. So basically this would also then be moved over here to address, where an address can have multiple owners. 
Okay, so they can have an array of owners, which except this is referring to person, which will be person three now. So person three, this will be address three. And again, let's change these to three, 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 and three. Okay, but it's the same idea. So basically, the address can keep track of which owners, which people from this table are the owners. And then this table can keep track of which addresses from here are its homes. Okay, so otherwise not too different. The only difference is that now I have an array of IDs on both objects. So the person can have many addresses and the address can have many homes. This is kind of how you would do many to many. You could use a third party table. I've done that, but this is probably the easiest and most sort of mongo -y way of doing it. Okay, so now let's create the routes that would facilitate that. And that looks like it's in the wrong spot. So let me just drag this file. Ooh. Okay, let's close up my node modules folder because I think I want to actually put more stuff in there. Okay, and now let's create our many too many routes, which should start off for the most part the same way. Okay, one too many routes. Like all oh, this should pretty much be the same way, except now we'll call this get the people three. Three, actually I should probably import the models while I'm at it. So let me import those. So this is gonna be many to many version. And this is person three, address three. Okay, and then I'm going back to my many to many routes, get people three, which is using person three. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna create a route to get addresses. So you can see that it works both ways. Okay, get address three, except this will be address three. And then instead of populating homes, it's gonna populate the owners field. Okay, because again, addresses have that owners field that is an array of owners based on a reference. Then this will just be make person three. We just create a person and then create make an address three. Just create an address like that doesn't really change. Now here what we'll change here is that we're gonna need to do this both ways. So not only do I need to update the person, but I'm also gonna go to the address and say dot owners dot push the person. So now that person becomes an owner of of that person, and then I need to save the address dot save. Okay, so the only difference is that every time I make these associations, I have to make sure I update both arrays on both sides. Okay. Not a huge tragedy, but again, it, it does get a little bit more of a boast as you do this more and more. This is kind of where like when you're working with related data, it makes a lot more sense to use like an SQL database. It's just being able to use SDSQL language is just a lot more friendly to doing this kind of thing. Um, although again, when you think about things like uh, Apache Drill, then that makes it possible to use SQL. Although I don't know if it handles like insertions, if it's just for querying the data, but again, the, the prospects are there. And again, with querying, you can do the joins and that's pretty cool. Uh, res.json person, so that, then again, I'm gonna just do this, put this in an object so we can send both things back, person and address. Okay. Cool. So now let's, I think I let's just make sure I don't see any twos in there. Yeah, I got all these twos here. Three, three, link address three. And yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so, oh. Nope, we're not good. Person two is not defined. Module that exports. Oops, I didn't fix the exports. Many to many version. These need to be three and three. Okay. Okay, so let's test all these routes out. So I'm back to my index.js. And again, all this code you should be able to find. And I have one repo with like all the code from all these videos. This should be in a folder called, um, the name of this folder is called um, Mongo Rel. So when you go in there, you'll see like a folder called Mongo Rel, and that's the code from this video. 
Um, cool. So I would go back. I may as well make the address one here because I got the address up. Get address. And let me just copy the data on Alex real quick. So that way I don't have to write all that out again. I'm going to copy that for a moment. Get address three. Oh, no, not get address three. Make address three, and that should be a post request. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to want to track that. Okay, I'm going to want to track that. Actually, I'll just put this here for a moment. I'll come back to that. Um, but I want I want that ID. So I'm going to grab that ID. But I really just, I don't want the quotation marks this time. Let's not make that mistake again. So this is the address. And we'll put the person above. I'm going to cut this information out. Control X, put this back in here. So let me just take out the stuff I don't need. I don't need the ID because we're maintaining a new person. I don't need the homes. We'll add that in later. So I really just need that. Okay, so now let's make a person three. So there we go. So now let me grab the ID of the person. And put that over here. So now we can do link person three. And then let me forget is that a post? It is a post. Didn't need to be, but it's fine. So here's the person ID. And then here is the ID of because again that's the way I set this up. I said, hey, first this link address three, then slash the ID of the person, and then the ID of the address. So now I have both of those. This should make an association. Uh, oh, but it's link address three. Ah. Address three. Try that again. And you see it worked. Okay, so if we take a look at the person, see the person is Alex and is also has a home that is Gouda Lane. And if we take a look at Gouda Lane, Gouda Lane has an owner that is Alex, who lives in Gouda Lane. Okay. Cool. So now what I can do is I should be able to query this. So if I query, go, I do get people three. And I do the get request. See, I get Alex, who lives in Gouda Lane. But now if I do get address three. Okay, then again, I get Gouda Lane, who has an array of owners. And again, that data is not being stored in those respective tables. I'm, is that populate function? Okay, is that populate function that's doing the job of filling in that data? Okay, so that's, again, a nice way to have the data set up across multiple collections, but then easily still create one nice complex data structure you can use in whatever application you're using the data in. Okay, whether it's a web application or some other application. So hopefully this gave you an idea of like how to do relationships in Mongo. Another thing um, I'd like to point out you can do is because you can see like a lot of this gets kind of like messy is you can wrap this up in functions. So I can, what I could do is I could bring these models into other, into other. So like, as you can see here, like associating all this would make life really difficult. So what I could have done is I could create a function that just called, you know, uh, person three dot associate. Okay, equals, and then make a function here that takes in, you know, like the person ID and the address ID. Okay. And then I can just copy this logic over. Um, so I can go back and index. Okay, see what I want to copy over is, I'll just initially just copy this. Okay, uh, let's go to the many to many file. Okay, so cons person equals away person three dot find by ID, except this time I'm going to use person ID. And then use address ID. Okay, and that'll just do everything I was doing before, except now I'm going to return this object. 
And again, since I'm using, I'm going to be using a sync await, so I'm going to make this an async function. Again, this is always returning a promise with the return value, but that's essentially what I can do now. Like this is now a property of this person object. I could go back over here and simplify this all by doing this. I can just say uh, return. I can just like simplify this all by saying like oh, wait person three dot associate and then let me go grab the params rec dot params actually const person id address id equals rec dot params and now i can just pass in those ids so anytime i need to associate it whether it's on this route or another routes I've just made the process a lot simpler by creating by adding some just some custom methods. Okay, so let me try and make sure that works. Okay, and let me go to my history here. Uh, is there a way to go back to my previous request? Here we go. Local link address. That's not what I clicked on. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, so it, it literally just did that in the browser. And see, it still worked. Okay. Um, oh, again, I'd like, let's see if I click here to under get address. So it gives me that. And then if I try this again, link address. Oh, I think it's showing me the result. I want I want to just do the address again, but I want to type that whole thing. Can you do that for me? Um coin, coin. Let's see, can I just please get the address somewhere? Here we go. There's the address. Link address. I just Okay. So I don't know if I add that to add that to there. Make this a post request. Send. Oop, I got an error this time. Probably because I'm pushing in the same ones again. Long relation person three is not defined. Person three. Oh. Await oh, person three. There we go. Typos. So let's try that again. Okay. Uh, let's go to the preview and it worked except it didn't do the populate um because i forgot to do that part oh no it doesn't populate for this particular piece but but you see there it did it did make the association between the two which if i then go and i go look them up individually i'll i'll get all the detail okay but my point here is that you can create custom methods to encapsulate some of those more complex logic like having to relate to instead of having to like write that whole logic out over and over again so if you find like, hey, this is like a lot of stuff I got to type out, make it a function. Okay. And you can, again, you can add methods to your model object easily. So why not? Uh, I think at this point we're getting near an hour. So I think we've uh, done the done the job. Um, but yeah, you can, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with Mongo. And there's a lot of fun things you can do. You can create static methods and there's other really cool sort of things you can do with that's built in. Uh, I don't remember the exact ways you do it. Like it's like something like you do the like the model dot static, but uh, you might even actually have, you might define those methods on the schema. I think so. Let me see here. Person dot schema dot. No, I didn't say person. Oh wait, no, because it's person schema. Person schema dot. Uh, virtuals, if you want to do like virtual relationships. I think methods, this methods object is where you can add more methods. If you want to add methods before you define the model. Um, and then I think there's one called like globals or static. Yeah, statics. And these would be static methods. Um, so basically, if you add them to them, actually, the way this works, statics would actually add it to like person three. Um, and then instance, or if you do methods, it would actually add it to the instance. So it would add it to like an individual person or an individual address. Although 
you don't have to do that. You can just create a function that maybe takes in an address and does what you need to do. There's different ways of doing it, but the point, my, my, my grander point here is don't be afraid to create functions to encapsulate some of your repetitive logic that is a little complex. So you don't have to, you can clean up your code by moving a lot of that complex logic into a separate file. And then two, you don't have to feel scared about reusing that logic because you already have it encapsulated in a function that you can reuse easily. So um, that'll make doing a lot of the more complicated things a lot less painful. So otherwise, I'll see y'all later. This is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? What would have probably even been better is if I created like two functions, one for associating a person with a house and one with associating. So that way I can use them as needed. But, you know, that all comes with time. So try this out. Hopefully you guys find this useful. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.